The great Chicago flood has left thousands of loop office workers in the dark this week. And in less than an hour, Commonwealth Edison will turn the lights out on dozens of other buildings in the South Loop. Channel 2's Dawn Stensland is live now in the Loop and can give us an update. Dawn? Bill, we're here in the heart of the total power shutdown in this part of the loop. In about a half an hour, the lights go off and so does all the electricity for 57 buildings. Now let's show you the areas affected here. Adams to the north, we're going to see Congress to the south, then Dearborn to the west, and all the buildings up to Michigan Avenue to the east. Now this will go on for 12 hours. The big question though tonight is why, and here to explain that part of it more is the vice president of Commonwealth Edison, Tom Amon. Tom, thanks for joining us tonight. Why do you need to shut down the power to so many buildings? Well, these buildings are served from a network uh, made up of various vaults throughout the city under the sidewalks. Uh, Monday when the water came, three of those vaults flooded right up to the top. And so we now have electrical equipment that's been operating for five days underwater. Normally that's not a problem. These uh, vaults are designed with equipment that is submersible, however, not intended to be operated forever underwater. So does that mean there's a danger involved in this? A, a danger of possibly an outage, because as the water stands, it gets dirty, it gets possibly contaminated, but more importantly, it becomes conductive. Okay. And that means we could have some flashovers and possibly that vault would go out of service and knock these buildings out of service at an unknown time. We'd rather do it, and so would the building owners, at a known predictable okay. time. And we are going to see some more known predictable times over the, ne over the next couple of days, Tom? No, we, these are the last two vaults. Uh, we have one in this area, and then the other area that you uh, were going to mention, uh, north of uh, that's tomorrow morning. Uh, Monroe, that's right, between Dearborn and, and uh, the river. Tom, thank you for joining us sure. tonight. Bill, back to you. And Don, thanks. Thank Tom, uh, Tom for us. He's been up with everybody else, trying to keep everyone informed. Of course, the flooding in the Loop raises serious questions about the aging structures of our city. Just how sturdy and how secure are they? Channel 2's Mike Flannery is here to tell us. Do we have reason to worry, Michael? The simple answer, Bill, is yes. While Chicago is better off than many of America's aging big cities, all of us have been out and we've seen those places where the city seems literally to be falling apart. We asked one expert to walk us through some of those specific places and another to give us the big picture of our crumbling city. Chicago and its infrastructure are simply getting old, like the tunnel that collapsed beneath the Chicago River, much of the city's infrastructure, its water mains, its sewers, its roads, and its bridges date back almost 100 years. The original L tracks that crisscrossed the loop were built in 1897 a time when most people still traveled by horse and buggy. Parts of the seawall, which protects the city's shoreline from the ravages of Lake Michigan, were constructed during the Depression. It is aging, like your house is aging, like your automobile is aging. Professor Sidney Goralnik is a civil engineer who studies the infrastructure of big cities. Cities are getting more complicated rather than less complicated. More buildings are going into the loop larger buildings putting ever greater strains on all of the infrastructure. The facilities are not getting simpler, they're more complicated. They require more maintenance, they require more attention. It will also require huge amounts of money. Over the next four years, the city says it needs $102 million for bridge repair work alone, $163 million for sewer improvements, $211 million for streets and sidewalks, and $291 million for water system modernization. The Chicago Transit Authority wants to spend a whopping $2 billion for repairs during the same time period. We're going to have to find new ways of constructing and replacing to be able to afford to give to our children what our parents and grandparents have given to us. Cities play on the margins of safety. Professor Paul Barrett has made a career of studying Chicago's bridges, roadways, and train tracks. He calls them the city's invisible infrastructure because people don't really notice them until something goes wrong or like the Michigan Avenue Bridge until they're shut down for repair. Things like bridges tend to get patched in a minimal way. That's not just a Chicago tradition, it's an urban tradition. You do the least you can, you do it as cheaply as you can. The Michigan Avenue Bridge opened in 1920. 
and people have been talking about repairing it for the last 30 years. But work only began last year. It is an example of something right in the middle of your town, in the most famous part of your town, that you wait as long as you can to take care of. There's no reward for fixing things. There's mainly a reward for making new things. The elevated tracks that crisscrossed the loop were new in the 1890s. You're looking at a structure that's been neglected really since the 1920s. And the structure is slowly falling down. This is the Lake Street line, a canal. When it was built, it was a modern marvel of mass transit. Now, wooden planks are in place to protect people down below from falling debris. The trains are ordered to crawl through here at 10 miles an hour because the tracks can't stand the stress of higher speeds. This structure used to carry three tracks. It used to run express trains, as they do in New York. Slowly, slowly, just through neglect and deterioration, it's been scaled back to two tracks, and it's under slow orders. That's the beginnings of an incremental disaster. Many of the sewers downtown are deteriorating, too. They're expected to last about 20 years more but they're being repaired so slowly that it may be 300 years before the whole system can be overhauled. This is what happens when it's too late. The Ogden Avenue overpass, a direct access route from the north side to the west side, closed and crumbling. The city didn't care enough or didn't have enough money to keep it operating, so I can take it apart with my hands and I'm an old man. Now the truth is that not all of these structures are worth fixing. But the ones that are, it's going to take billions of dollars to save, money that politicians at every level say they don't have. And up until now, there has been no outcry from the voters to find the money. We'll see if the tunnel disaster here in Chicago is going to change any of that, Bill. Michael, you scare me to death. Jay Levine is going to update us from the scene of the leak after a break. Also, Linda McLennan looks back at the drama that has played out all week long beneath the Kinsey Street Bridge. And life on the river, tonight, the men who live on Chicago's waterways.